Up With Crim begins now. Right now on Up With Crim, this year Spokane Public Schools will have more changes than just wearing masks in the classroom. Tim Pham joins us from Ferris High School to tell us more. Uh, good morning, everyone. It is the first day of school. We made it to this big day. So coming up, I'm going to be speaking live with the superintendent of Spokane Public Schools a little bit later in the show. And we have crews spread out all across Spokane this morning. Nicole Hernandez joining us live from an elementary school looking to make the first day of school as fun as possible. Yeah, that's right. The principal here at Stevens Elementary School is planning on making the first day of school for elementary schoolers so much fun with DJs and live mascots. And I'm inside Glover Middle School. Melissa told me I could go around and kind of feel the place out. Look at how cool this glass door is. Uh oh, but I moved it. I hear the principal's coming. Uh, back to you guys. Well, good morning and thank you so much for joining us on Up With Crim. And of course, a big happy first day of school to students in Spokane Public Schools. Now this morning, our team is headed back to school with all of you. Jeremy Lagoo is live from Glover Middle School. Jeremy, don't break anything yet. Now he's giving us an inside look at the brand new building there. Tim Pham is joining us from Ferris High School and he is telling us about some special changes coming to the district and even speaking to the district superintendent. But first up, Nicole, Hernandez is live at Stevens Elementary and they're starting off the year in a big way. Now wait, Nicole, you mentioned just a few seconds ago that there's going to be a live DJ and mascots. Yeah, there is and their mascot is an eagle. So if I don't see an eagle this morning, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So yeah, the principal is starting this year off with a bang for students. It's going to be super exciting. They're going to have, like I mentioned, that live DJ. They're going to have mascots around and it's just going to be a party because, of course, this is such an exciting day for teachers, students, the principal, all alike. So in a little bit, I'm actually going to be talking with the principal. But one thing we do want to talk about before we get to that is the way that Spoken Public Schools is going to help keep their students and staff safe throughout the year. So one thing as school starts that is difficult to find here in Spokane is COVID-19 testing. So I actually spoke with the Spokane Public School District about how they're going to help families have access to testing throughout the school year. So they are still getting pieces of a program together, but there's a big team of SBS working on this and it'll be different than last year because of course they have some experience now with how things work. All of the kids are also going back to school at once this time instead of waves. So it's just another reason why things are looking a little bit different this year. So public, Spokane Public Schools will have drive up PCR testing just like they had last year. They're still figuring out exactly what locations those will be at. They're also those starting strike teams for testing in schools specifically. They're calling this the quote test to stay program. If a school has students exposed at school, uh, exposed at school, the testing strike team will go in, getting all the students that were exposed tested consistently. That will let students stay in school instead of missing learning time to quarantine. Our interest is, is having kids at school because we know just the impacts of not having them in school for, for their education. And so we just want to make sure that we can do that safely. Um, but still have them be accessing the resources that they can only get when they come to one of our buildings. And of course, parents should know that if their student is exposed to COVID-19 outside of school, that is when those PCR drive up testing spots are really important and critical for parents to use. Of course, the goal is like they like that, that um, like she just mentioned, is to keep students in school. So right now the district is still working to determine exactly where those PCR drive up locations are going to be, depending on centralized locations and where their nursing staff can work best. But we'll make sure to keep you updated as soon as that information comes out. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, thank you, Nicole. Now it is time to get a look at that first day of school forecast with meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo. He's live at Glover Middle School, and not only is he doing the weather today, but he's also giving a tour of this brand new middle school. So Jeremy, tell us a little bit about what you're learning while you're exploring in the school this morning. Well, I'm learning that you can touch everything because it is a school, but the principal came and joined me, Mark Lund. Oh. Well, a couple of questions before we kick things off. First, are you excited? And second, after we do that, uh, any advice for kids coming to the school for the first time? Beyond excited and just okay. and really grateful. So we've got an awesome opportunity here to welcome students into, 
into their school, right? It's not just a place they're visiting, this is their school. Okay. Um, you know, advice that I have, I was actually, I put it in my pocket this morning, but it was my middle school ID card. And I'm thinking, what would I tell myself at this point in time? And it's, don't worry, like everyone is trying to figure out how they belong and how they connect. And everyone shows up to school with the same anxiety and, and stress. And, and you're not alone in that. So the biggest piece of advice I can give you is, see how many people you can introduce yourself to today. Say, hi, my name is, and see what their name is. That's, that's really the biggest piece of advice I got, is everyone is feeling that, and it's gonna be okay, all right? This is a great place for you. Oh, love it. Thank you, Mark, so much, and that is some excellent advice for the kids out there. Not just coming here, but for every school, and I gotta do a quick weather, so all right. I gotta let those kids know what to do. It is going to be a chilly morning, and it is a chilly morning here. It says it's 50 here in Spokane, but I'm here to tell you as soon as you leave the airport, temperatures drop into the 40s, and that is where we're going to kind of start the day. We are chilly across much of the region, and those chilly temperatures stick around all over the place. We are down in the 40s, even some 30s in there. For that reason, we have frost advisories in place. Everywhere shaded in blue is going to see those temperatures fall into the 30s, potential frost. That's those uh, more sensitive fruits and vegetables and flowers, so just kind of be aware of that. And as we head through the day, temperatures are on the rise. By the time we get into the afternoon, we'll be in the mid-70s. So we go from the mid to upper 40s when you're heading to school this morning, kids. Trust me on this. To the mid-70s this afternoon. Might want a light coat or something you can shove in the backpack on the way home because it is going to be quite a bit warmer when the school day's over. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Now, Jeremy is not at the only brand new middle school this, that's opening up this year. Amanda Rowley is also live at Shaw Middle School where they are getting ready to greet students for the very first time. Good morning, Amanda. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, it's really exciting to be here at Shaw Middle School. This is the first time I've walked into the building, seen this campus, and it is it's stunning. It's blown me away. Joining me this morning is this middle school's new principal for the new school, uh, John Sweat. Uh, I, I asked you earlier, but if you could tell me again, how does it feel to be the principal of this new middle school? Or new building, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this 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 has been awesome. We, you know, we we really look forward to seeing our kids, all of them, first time in a year and a half. Right. So we want to see what they've got on their faces as they walk into this new building. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's a surprise to them, right? There hasn't been any pre tours for anybody. So this, when they walk in today, it'll be fresh eyes. Yeah, we really wanted to keep our community and our kids out until the ribbon cutting. We want our staff to meet our kids outside and then start bringing them into their neighborhoods and, and learning what the school is all about. And we're in a pretty neat place. So this is unique to Shaw Middle School. We are in what they call a neighborhood. So can you kind of walk me through? Give us a lay of the land. This is just we're on the second floor. Shaw used to be a single story building. Now we're on the first time for a second floor. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, so this this would be the living room that we're standing in uh -huh. and um, the what we really tried to do was we tried to keep our kids engaged in their schoolwork as much as possible during the day. Uh -huh. So every neighborhood has a drinking fountain, has a bathroom, has a huddle room where teachers can meet with their kids uh, in a more private space. Uh -huh. And then all of the the classrooms open to each other and then have that clear view to the to the living room so that they can keep an eye on kids and kids can work together out here without a teacher standing right here. Yeah. And I saw references to like the hive here for the neighborhood. You can see references of that with like the high, what, <laughs> what do you call these little stools, right? This is kind of a neat hangout spot. Like you said, the living room, right? Yep. Uh, before we go though, can you kind of talk about the importance of how this design was keyed into the importance of building those relationships with students and, and their teachers? Yeah. You know, for kids to be able to walk into a building like this and be able to say, this is my school. Um, you know, it's a safe place where, you know, kids can have a dream. They can, they can be successful, but they can also fail and it's safe for them. So this is kind of that living room, um, atmosphere where it's safe and it's theirs. They get to come in and move the furniture around and design it the way it fits for them. Um, when those relationships get to the point where kids feel safe and they trust their teachers, um, they can really access their education and that's what this is all about. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful to hear. Well, I think that'll wrap it up for us. Thank you so much, Principal Sweat, for making the time to, to chat with us and show us around. Love the idea of the neighborhood. Such a great sense of community for, for those core classes, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you so much. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, thanks, Amanda. Now, as students head back to school in Spokane today, there are a lot of concerns about rising COVID cases, especially as many students aren't able to get vaccinated yet. Tim Pham joins us live with more details. Yeah, a lot of big changes this year, Channing. So coming up, I'm speaking live with the superintendent of Spokane Public Schools, Dr. Adam Swinyard. That's coming up next on Up With Krem.